So the first step in this process is to remove the lug studs with a 17 millimeter socket. Next you'll need to remove the anti-rattle clip and you can just do that by prying against the hat of the rotor and then it should come out no problem. So the next step is to remove the brake pad wear sensor here and that's easily done by just kind of pulling outwards. Should be, shouldn't give too much trouble. There we go. And then you can remove the, the clip on the um, caliper bleeder screw just to give yourself some more room. Get the sensor out of the way. And you may want to turn the steering wheel to give you some easier access to all the screws and stuff here on the caliper. So the next step is to unbolt the caliper from the caliper carrier. You're going to want to locate these rubber things. You're going to need to remove the caps. Pretty easy to remove. So on the bottom here as well. So this guy right here. That'll reveal the sliding caliper screws or the pins and you'll need a 7 millimeter Allen bit uh, to remove those screws and then you can remove the caliper. Once you've removed the caliper, make sure to hang the caliper with either a stiff wire or a bungee cord of some sort so that there's no stress on the brake line or the brake hose. So the next step is to uh, loosen the screws that bolt the the caliper carrier to the steering knuckle. So it's going to be this one and this one down here and you're going to need an, an 18 millimeter socket for that. So the next step is to take the rotor off. To do that we're going to loosen this little uh, screw with a 6 millimeter Allen bit and then you should just be able to remove the rotor from the hub. So I'm going to spin the wheel bearing or the hub here and you can actually hear the sound it makes. That does not sound good. And you can actually put your hand on the coil spring on the strut as you spin it and if you feel vibration chances are that the wheel bearing is really gone. And in this case I can definitely feel it. Okay so the next couple of steps will just make life a bit easier for us uh, removing the wheel bearing. So in what order you do these next steps doesn't really matter too much but I'm just gonna start here so I'm gonna start by uh, unbolting the stabilizer link from the knuckle here so you're gonna need a 16 millimeter wrench and a 16 millimeter socket on the other side there are two flats here that you that you should be able to get that wrench on crack that nut and then just disconnect it from the knuckle here so the next step is to separate the tie rod from the steering knuckle by removing this 18 millimeter nut right here. And then we'll be able to use our ball joint separator to press it and separate the two. Just a heads up, if this is your first time uh, taking this nut off, it will be very hard to turn at some point. That's completely normal and just keep going it'll get easier. Okay so now it's time to use the ball joint separator. So I'm going to use this one here. I got this one off Amazon. And so we're going to, to set this up you're going to want to make sure this nut is on here and make sure it's flush with the stud because you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on these surfaces and you don't want to ruin the threads that are on the stud. So, well this is how I have the ball joint separator set up. Maybe you can get a better view from down here. So you can kind of see how that's going to work. As I tighten the screw, it's going to act as a lever and push the, the stud of the steering rod out of the knuckle. So let's start turning. So now that your steering is disconnected from the knuckle, 
you can turn the steering wheel just to retract this outer tie rod into the rack and away from the working area just to give you a bit more space. The next step is to remove the ABS pulse sensor and to do that you'll need a 5mm Allen bit to remove the sensor and then you should be able to pry off the, the cap on the back with a screwdriver or a small pry bar. Alright so the next step is going to be to loosen the strut pinch bolt back there that one over there but before we do that we want to mark exactly where the strut is sitting in the knuckle so now that I've got my position marked I can start to loosen the strut pinch bolt so to do that you're going to need an 18 millimeter socket for this nut which is what you're going to be turning and on the other side you're going to need a 16 mil socket so that's the one you're going to hold while you're spinning the nut <coughs> spinning the nut on the other side okay now that I got the pinch bolt off and the knuckle can move freely along the strut you can see where I made my mark before and now it's down further so the way the owner's manual says to do it is now that you can move the you can move the the strut out of the way or upwards relative to the knuckle to gain access to these four screws that you'll need an 18 millimeter socket to loosen but honestly if you want to make it really easy for yourself I would just take the whole strut out entirely so you can loosen these three 13 millimeter nuts here for the strut tower and then uh, bring the whole assembly down and then just tilt the whole strut out from under the fender, remove it, and then you'll have plenty of room to remove the bolts or the screws that hold the bearing in. So just be aware that these screws that you're going to loosen on the back for the wheel bearing, um, there's thread locker on them, so they're going to be really difficult to get off. And it might make a very harsh sound when you're trying to loosen it. I'll show you guys what the sounds like. Eventually it'll stop. Here's what the screw looks like after it's been pulled out. It looks fine, but you can see the thread locker on there, the pink stuff. And this rusty part is just a part that is proud of the knuckle and it's sticking out, out behind the rotor. So I took the strut out. It's going to give us lots of room in the back now. I actually removed three of the screws before I took the strut out. But that last one is nearly impossible to get to. You would need at least two sets of hands. But now it's going to be really easy to take it out. As you can see, there's plenty of room. And the best way to do it is because the knuckle is going to want to move around on you. It's best to stick a pry bar in the strut hole. And then that way you can keep the knuckle where you want it as you try to loosen the last screw. Now that I've got all the screws out, you should just be able to give the bearing or the hub a little tap. And it should come right out. Here we go. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good. It doesn't feel very good either. Alright, now you just need to clean up the mating surface for the new one. Make sure it's all nice and clean. And then put everything back. So at this point in time, the service manual advises replacing the four screws that hold the wheel bearing into the knuckle. I'm not going to do that. I just cleaned cleaned up the existing ones. I cleaned up the thread and I'm going to add new thread locker on there and then put them back in. The threads are all good on them so I figure reusing them is fine. So the torque spec for these screws that hold the wheel bearing into the steering knuckle is 81 foot-pounds or 110 newton meters.
tighten these three 13 millimeter nuts to 18 foot pounds or 24 newton meters. Now that the new wheel bearing is bolted in and torqued in, it's time to put this dust cover back on. And when you put the wheel speed sensor back in, you'll need a 5 millimeter Allen or Allen bit. Now it's time to tighten the strut pinch bolt with an 18 millimeter socket on this side and holding with a 16 millimeter wrench on this side. And you're going to want to tighten it to 61 foot pounds or 81 newton meters. So now we got to tighten the stabilizer link back to the knuckle with a 16 millimeter socket and holding with a 16 millimeter wrench. The torque spec is 48 foot pounds or 65 newton meters. Now it's time to tighten the steering the outer tie rod to the steering knuckle with an 18 millimeter uh, socket or, or an 18 millimeter wrench and a 5 millimeter Allen key. And the torque spec is 48 foot pounds or 65 newton meters. Now use a 6 millimeter Allen key bit or Allen bit to tighten the rotor to the hub at 12 foot pounds or 16 newton meters. Now tighten the two uh, caliper carrier bolts to 81 foot pounds or 110 newton meters. Make sure to reinstall the caliper. Don't forget the spring here. And then also don't forget to uh, lubricate these pins and use a 7 millimeter Allen bit. Torque it from behind at uh, 22 newton or 22 foot pounds, which is 30 newton meters. Don't forget to put the brake pad wear sensor back onto the caliper or back onto the brake pad. And the final step is to torque the wheels down with a 17 millimeter socket at 89 foot pounds or 120 newton meters. And that's it.